Hey, how's it going? I have having a shit one. This is a new bag I'm using. It's from Crumpler. Um, I don't actually know the exact model because they just they just sent me their website and they're like, which bag do you want? And I was like, that one. So I'm actually gonna have to find which bag I have and then I'll link it in my description because I'm not actually too sure on the model name. Recently, I moved over from this bag, which is which was in my last video. This was the Promaster Impulse. And I did recommend it back in the day when I just got it because it was a great bag, really compact, could fit most of my stuff in there. Um, but this was really great until the zip started breaking. So don't get this one. My camera, the main event, is a Sony A7R Mark IV. I don't need its 62 megapixel crazy fucking high quality shit because most of my photos I shoot, I just post onto Instagram or downsize to put into YouTube videos. <laughs> really, I don't actually need a camera that probably shoots anything over like 30 megapixels, but whatever. It's nice to know that if I do want to blow my image up really big, like literally billboard size, then I can use the Mark IV. The reason why I have the camera is because I obviously make YouTube videos and take photos and I like to film my videos in 4K. Uh, the old Sony camera that I had, which was the A7R Mark III, that didn't shoot uh, uncropped 4K. That's why I got the Mark IV. Inside the camera, I'm using a 512 gigabyte Lexia SD card. I'm pretty sure, I'm not sure. And a 128 gigabyte SanDisk SD card in there. So not running out of space anytime soon. And I'm the worst with SD cards as well. Like I'll always leave one plugged in my computer by accident and then go out on a shoot. So it's nice to know I have a second SD card there as a backup just in case. So for the most part, I have a 16 to 35 2.8 G Master bolted onto the camera mainly for filming. So when I'm out vlogging and you know, just doing general video stuff, the 16 to 35 is great because I'm getting in and out of cars a lot. It's really nice to have that wide view Plus you can zoom into 35 mil if you kind of need it. Then on top of the camera is a Rode VideoMic Pro Plus. Whew, what a fucking name. On top of that, I have a dead cat on it, which I don't know which brand it is. It just sort of fits the Rode mic. And that's really good if I'm out shooting in the rain or it's windy or something. Yeah, it helps quite a bit. Next up is the Sony 24-70 2.8 G Master. This is actually Le Mans lens, but I use it as well. And I actually have a Sigma 24-70 2.8 that I use, but right now Liam's using it. So this is the interesting thing about my lenses now. Back in 2018 when I made my old video, I had like my lens collection and that was great. And Liam had his lens collection and that was great. And Hayden and Le Mans did. But now we're doing a lot more work with Sigma and they're sort of lending us lenses and testing, and testing them out every couple of months, a new lens will come out. Hey guys, do you want to try this lens? So we'll just rotate the lenses in between all of us and whatever we kind of need to shoot, I'll just call up Liam, Hayden, Luan and be like, hey, you got the 40 mil? Yeah, I do, I'll come pick it up. You got the 105? Yeah, I'll come pick it up. So mainly what I generally steal the most from everyone is the 35 mil and I used to steal the 40 mil a lot, uh, but now Hayden's got it quite a bit, but because the 35 1.2 came out, uh, I've been using this quite a lot. And here's a fun fact, I shoot a lot of cars, so I have polarizers. My 16 to 35, my 24 to 70, and my 35 mil fit the same polarizer, which is an 82 mil Hoya polarizer. And then when I can steal it from Le Mans, I use this big boy. This is the 105 mil 1.4 from Sigma. And honestly, this lens made me sell my 70 to 200. Because the 7200 was a great lens and I made a video raving on about how good it was. But however, even though it was so pricey and really expensive, I felt that it lacked quality from 135 mil all the way to 200 mil. I just felt like the quality of the glass sort of, I don't know, maybe that's me being over picky and stuff, but shooting on a prime lens, you're always gonna get a sharper shot. The 7200 was a really good lens and I don't know, maybe I'll get one again in the future, but literally I haven't needed it since I've been using the 105 mil. This is pretty much my go-to for car photography if I don't have the 105 mil. Obviously, if you know maths, 85 mil is a lot wider than 105 mil, surprisingly. It doesn't sound much wider, but it actually is. And the 85 mil gets a really nice natural shot as well. Like it looks very realistic, if that makes sense. So sort of almost very similar to how you would see something in real life. The 85 mil pretty much gets that. And it's a great lens to film on as well. So. I mean, if you can find one of these, I know Sony make one. I think they make it with an inbuilt stabilizer, I'm pretty sure. So if you can get one of those, that's really good. But if you don't have the budget, just grab the good old trusty Sigma 85. That's a great lens. Anyway, on top of that, I have a Mavic 2 Zoom. And I got the Zoom over the Hasselblad one because I think it's dope to be able to zoom in on a drone and get really cinematic shots. Uh, I don't have it here for the video because Liam took it and then he fucked off to his farm. So... 
here's some beer all of it, I guess. <laughs> uh, and that's really great drone. We actually just picked it up and Liam and I share that between us. I've been doing a lot more stuff with GoPros. I've been shooting the POV videos. I've now started doing the POV driving videos and I have a new one coming out. It's the Porsche 992 POV driving video, which I'm really excited to show you. But yeah, I've been using a DJI Osmo Action uh, and that's mainly strapped onto my chest or my head most of the time. And then I have three other GoPros that also go on my car. I got a, I think this one, I got a Hero 7. Yeah, I got a Hero 7 Silver because I got it so cheap. And I was like, okay, yeah, I'll just take it. But the Hero 7 Black is really what you want to get because they have the inbuilt stabilization and you can do live modes and stuff. You can do the super zooms and I don't know. The, yeah, I don't know. The salesman kind of let me down with the Silver. I think he sort of oversold this to me, but it was so cheap. So I was like, it was literally like 75% off, so. You'd probably do the same. Anyway, but this is great just to film exhaust notes and front POV shots or front point of view shots or whatever, like hood shots and side angles or whatever. So I just strap these all around my car when I go for a drive. Next up, probably the biggest change. I switched to Apple. So I used to have a Razer Blade Stealth and it was a horrible computer and I hated it. Never fucking buy that computer ever in your life. I don't know why I even bought it. Uh, but I ended up getting a MacBook Pro. This is a 15 inch and I fully spec'd it out. It has every single option on it uh, when you go and check it out, except for the storage. So I got the smallest amount of storage because I use this, which is uh, a Lacey Thunderbolt and Type-C four terabyte hard drive. And then recently I actually got this which is a Samsung SSD two terabyte. So right now I edit all of my current projects on this and then I transfer, if I'm going traveling somewhere, I'll bring this with me. So I'll transfer my project onto here as well. So I'll back it up. And then I back everything up onto this. So I have three hard drives. I pretty much triple back everything up because I don't want to lose anything. I've heard too many horror stories of people dropping hard drives and losing all this footage, trying to recover shit, not being able to recover stuff and losing years or months or whatever amount of work, especially if you're doing work for like a client and then you lose it all. Oh, bro, I never want that to happen to me. So I'm really cautious whenever I back up my stuff. So I have this expandable hard drive. This has currently got eight terabytes in it, but when I say expandable, I mean that you can open it up oh yeah, and there's your hard drive. So I can pretty much take all of these out, get a new shell and build a shelf of these in it. So they have four terabytes each in there and I can just expand it if I want to. Oh, by the way, sorry. This is a Lacey hard drive as well. Yeah, and I think that's all the tech. The rest of it is just a bunch of random shit like dust puffers, chest mounts and suction mounts for GoPros. In the back part of my bag here, I've got like hand sanitizer, spare batteries, wired headphones. Uh, usually my headphones that I use for editing, I have AirPod Pros, which I hated. And then I got them and I was like, holy fuck, these are amazing. So <laughs> never going back to wired headphones, but in case I misplace them or something, or I'm traveling somewhere and I forget to get them or they run out of battery, the wired headphones never let me down. So they're just like some cheap $30 wired headphones. I use a Manfrotto B3 tripod. I currently have one right now that the camera is sitting on. Uh, but this one, like the legs are a bit dodgy. So I went out and got a new one. I take that out to all my photo shoots. And then I, this one lives on my desk at one length. So I can just chuck my camera on instead of trying to maneuver the camera or maneuver the tripod head around. And then I got other random knickknacks, like a little diary or a notebook. Not a diary, not like, dear diary, today Liam made fun of me. No, I pretty much just like, I don't know, graffiti in it or write down some ideas that I'm thinking of. If I'm traveling and I'm taking, you know, all of this stuff with me, my drone, everything like that, if everything's in my bag, fully packed out, the max it weighs is 11 kilograms. So the airports fucking hate me because like max you can take is seven kilos. And one time I actually got pulled up. They were like, sir, you know, you can't have that much weight in your bag. So what I did was I took all of my equipment out. I was holding my drone, my laptop under my arm, my camera on its strap. By the way, I use a peak design strap when I really need to, mainly when I'm traveling or if I'm skating and taking photos at the same time, I'll use it. But I put my camera strap over me. So I'm holding like five kilos of weight. And then I'm like, weigh my bag now. Because what you can do, you can hold your camera gear and your laptop 
and then they'll just weigh whatever the content is inside your bag. So you can just take all your stuff out, hold all your shit, and then they'll weigh your bag and be like, thanks. You go through the gate and then you just pack it all back in it. So, you know, that's a little tip for traveling if you ever go, if you ever get pulled up, because I know nobody's camera bag is like under seven kilos. That's bullshit. If your camera bag's under seven kilos, you're not a photographer. You're a hobbyist, okay? <laughs> if you did like this video, leave a like down below or help me out by hitting subscribe. But with that all said and done, have a shit one.